a blessed day to each and everyone again my name is sure april your youtube teacher for today and it's another topic for professional development we're going to talk about the nature and development of philippine nationalism so at the end of the presentation, we shall be able to first know the contributory factors that give birth to Philippine nationalism. Second, state the impact of customs and traditions and religions on nationalism. And third, integrate and promote the value of nationalism at all times. These are the contributory factors that give birth to Philippine nationalism. Montesquieu, Rousseau, Voltaire, Locke, Jefferson, and other people let's start one by one first we have montesquieu he was a france social commentator and political thinker who lived during the age of enlightenment the age of enlightenment was an intellectual and philosophical involvement that dominated the world of ideas in europe during the 17th and 18th centuries we have rousseau Jean-Jacques Rousseau was a Genevan philosopher, writer, and composer of 18th century. His political philosophy influenced. So the French Revolution refers to the period that began with the Estates General of 1789 and ended in November 1799 with the formation of the French Consulate. Many of its ideas are considered fundamental principles of Western liberal democracy and it's being influenced by a French Revolution. We have Voltaire, Francois Marie Arouet, known by his name Voltaire, was a French Enlightenment writer, historian, and philosopher. He was born on November 21, 1964, and died last May 30, 1770. Locke is widely known as the father of classical liberalism. He was an English philosopher and physician, regarded one of the most influential of Enlightenment thinkers. We also have Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was an American founding father, the principal author of the Declaration of Independence and the third president of the United States. So through this, these are the contributory factors or these are the contributory people who inspired in the development of the national in the Philippines. Let's recap one more time. So we have the following people, Montesquieu, we have Rousseau, we have Voltaire, and we have Locke and Jefferson. So the triumph, let's talk about the Spanish Revolution in 1868. The triumph of liberalism in spanish against the autocratic rule of isabella which was last 1833 and 1869 resounded across the seas to the shores of overseas colonies the filipinos came to enjoy for the first time the sweet taste of liberal regime including the following first the freedom of speech the freedom of the press and the freedom of assembly and other human rights this is the first freedom that we have that was being celebrated every june 12. then the suez canal and the filipinos the opening of suez canal to world shipping in 1869 stimulated philippine progress the canal is 103 miles long and connects the mediterranean with the gulf of suez and hence with the red sea and indian ocean this is well the barter takes place when it comes to to replacing or when it comes to trading of the things or of the foods and other materials with other countries. The Filipinos people are deeply resented because of the execution of Father Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. The execution of Gombursa sped up the growth of Philippine nationalism, which ultimately brought about Spain's downfall because what they have done on this on these martyrs. This three martyrs is also being described on the novel of Dr. Jose Rizal. And they have the martyrdom. The impact in customs and tradition and religion on nationalism. National literature, art, music, and all other forms of culture must serve for a finder source and inspiration on people's activities and dedicate their achievement to people. How are we going to show this? So let's 
start and check about the customs and tradition of Filipinos. First is Filipino character traits and culture that affects the development of nationalism. <laughs> this I don't know if this is a bad side or a good side, but they have Filipinos have propensity for gambling. That means that they do cockfighting, they do horse races, they do wetting, and they do blackjack, poker, mahjong. Most scandalous of their character defects on their propensity of gambling. So Filipinos are known as a gambler. Next. No one day passes in the Philippines without a costly fiesta for every barangay, town, and city. The archipelago has a patron saint whose annual feast day is celebrated with great extravaganza. No day even passes in the Philippines without a costly fiesta or some barangay or everything even though filipinos don't have any money anything left on their account they're going to celebrate it as a praise and glorifying the patron saint of a particular barangay and this is we call this as the inveterately extravagant we filipinos are very very extravagant and when it comes to fiestas, clothes, and gay parties as well. We are always looking forward for these events. And of course, jewelry as well. Filipinos are good when it comes to consideration. They have a fatalistic in their outlook in life. They tend to believe that whatever happens, good or bad, this is due to faith or tadhana. Bahala na is also one factor. They believe in the saying of a Spanish term, que sera sera. It means it's equivalent of what will be, will be. So they accept without uncomplaining resignation that ever happens to them and face the future with the expression, bahala na. Then, Filipinos also have lack of disciplines and perseverance. Normally, they begin their work with great enthusiasm, but with a kogon fire which burns brightly for a brief time and soon and then soon disappears. So this is the stamina that we are currently going right now because of the tropical environment that we have. And we call this as Ningas Kugon. We are only good at the beginning, but we're not good in finishing at the end. Filipinos are very hospitable. They receive all foreigners, including their former, former foes in wars in their country and home with warm hospitality and friendship. So in terms of this one, we are giving all our best in welcoming other people in our homes. Filipinos are also known for close family ties and extended family structures. Apart from being loyal to their blood relatives, Filipinos also adopt new kins, which is the compadre and comadre, through way having male and female sponsors, which is we call them as the Nino or Nina during baptism and weddings. So we are extended family. We Filipinos are known for extravagant celebrations and parties, being hospitable and having a close family ties. In fact, there's always a gathering every Christmas and New Year's together with the extended family. We Filipinos have gratitude or utang na loof. They are grateful to those who have given them favors or when who are good in them. So, for example, if they did something good, they are giving something in exchange so that they can able to repay the gratitude that was given to them. Filipinos are very cooperative. They value the virtue of helping each other people. They cherish ancestral trait of bayanihan, which is the cooperation, which can mean helping a rural family move their small hut to another place without anything in return. They also brave. Filipino rank among the bravest Filip people on earth. They bravely resisted the Spanish, American, and Japanese invaders of their own native land. Filipinos are passionate, romantic, and artistic. They owe the effect of their beautiful country Filipinos, which are very passionate and romantic. They are decided and in love as they are fierce in the battle, and they're also born musicians, singers, artists, and poets. So if they're negative, then we can also say that they're also positive. There are a lot of positive attributes of Filipino. Filipinos are intelligent. According to David P. Barrows, an American educator, Filipinos have quick perception, retentive memory, aptitude, and extraordinary docility, making them most teachable person.
Filipinos are very adaptable, endured, and resilient. Against the winds of adversities which regularly visit their land, they simply bend but never break, for they have durability of the Nara tree and resilience of the bamboo. Thought Throughout all ages, they had been lashed by all the kinds of sufferings like invasion, revolts, earthquakes, wars, typhoons, volcanic eruptions, and epidemics, but still Filipinos stand still. They have deep spiritual yearning and gift of faith. Filipinos tend to take their spiritual obligations with utmost devotion and faithfulness, whatever their religion may be. They have racial and cultural diversities. Virtual one of many races, that is why Filipinos displayed remarkable adaptability, resulting in a many sides culture heritage. Filipino nationalism has its own barriers. The emergence of Filipino nationalism came as the end of a long process set in motion by Spanish misrule and exploitation, highs and by the political and economic developments in the Philippines and Europe. The quest for nationalism, the Filipino quest for independence continued until 1935 when the United States promised to withdraw on a definite date. Also, Rizal's vision has a gospel of Philippine nationalism. He also identified the essence of letters as an aspirations to alleviate sufferings of the masses. The economic and constitutional nationalism of the Filipinos have a context of constitutional reform for the development of the country, which necessitates a more positive definition of economic nationalism. In fact, the church's resurgence in nationalism in the Philippines, which became a discursive institution analyst last December 1, 2016, he stated that not only does the represent in Mindanao's resentment towards Imperial Manila, but also historical blowback against U.S. imperialism. So Duterte's nationalism exhortations can be traced to the cycle of regime narratives in the Philippines and has a medium of institutional continuity and change throughout the mobilization of ideas. Also, we also have the, according to dfa.gov.ph, that the Philippines as a multi-ethnic nation with numerous diverse and unique examples of intangible cultural heritage. So thus, according to Andres Bonifacio, a man's worth is not measured by his stations in life, neither by the height of his nose nor the fairness of skin, and certainty not only whether he is a tree priest claiming to God's deputy. Even if he is a tribesman from the hills and speaks only his own language, a man is an honorable man if he possesses a good character which is true to his word and his fine perception and is loyal to his native line. These are all my references for today's discussion. Thank you once again. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell button for further updates. Bye!